Okay, it is April 21st, 2014, uh, 12, 13 p.m. calling Brenda Casalius, Commissioner, Minnesota Department of Education. Hi, how are you doing today? I am well. Well, that's good. Is uh, Commissioner Casalius in? <clears throat> she is not. Can I take a message for her? Uh, do you know when she will be back in? She is out today and tomorrow. Um, is there something I can help you with? Well, I'm going to send her an email. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> got a frog in my throat. Uh, it's about some disturbing incidents that's happening at uh, the District 206 school in Alexandria. Okay. And uh, for one thing, I'm being harassed by the uh, superintendent, uh, Rick Lane. I'm trying to get some data from him, and he's illegally withholding this information. And, uh, and uh, the, one example is I asked for the contract for the uh, school with the um, the police department and instead of sending me a signed contract like I asked for he obviously must have manufactured some uh, phony document he took a draft of the contract and then signed his name to it but the uh, the mayor's uh, name is missing off of it um, and the um, the clerk's name is missing off of it. I mean, so it's just childish. Uh, I mean, it's just an insult to my intelligence. It's a waste of my, my time, and it's a waste of public resources. Obviously, he has something to hide, and um, I'm well aware that uh, there's a public document that I referenced to the school that I'm aware that um, uh, Mr. Tom Bruner, his son, Greg, had uh, was had his uh, car illegally searched on school property and so when he went to the school to uh, ask for the surveillance video the first response was that Mr. Bruner needed to get a subpoena to get the information from the school and then he um, found out that it was actually part of the data Minnesota Data Practice Act, he could get the data, and so he informed uh, the principal, Amy Sack, that uh, he wanted her to retain that information, and um, of course she didn't. So, you know, the presumption is she has something to hide. It was an illegal search. She, she uh, got the student to come back onto campus after he had already left under false pretenses. Apparently she had gone to the sister of the of the student and uh, took the phone from her to call her brother. So, you know, this is one of these underhanded deals where, you know, if they if the police needed to search the car, they would have had to get a warrant or the parents' permission. This way they could just, you know, bait the child back onto school property do the illegal search and uh, you know get away with it and then of course the school aids and abets by you know not giving him the surveillance video which of course he reported to the county attorney and then the county attorney in typical fashion sent it off to the city attorney which of course would be a conflict of interest so anyhow um, I started asking some questions and asked for this data so instead of receiving the data, I received harassment from Mr. Lane. Are, are you still with me? Uh-huh. Okay. So anyhow, uh, I re received this harassing phone call from him out of the blue, unsolicited. I didn't ask him to call me. He calls me on uh, April 8th at 12.17 p.m. And it just starts to... I felt like I was being getting re receiving the third degree, so I can understand how his students, uh, you know, are treated when uh, he decides to interrogate them, because that's what I received as an interrogation. So anyhow, and that wasn't bad enough. Then he calls back, 
at approximately 227 on the same day and he didn't leave a message so uh, apparently he was trying for round two of his harassment because it, you know if it was an apology all he had to do is just leave the apology but uh, he said that he would contact he's in contact with his lawyers and they would send me my data well obviously he conspired with his attorneys to illegally withhold the data from me so I for one thing I don't appreciate being harassed by public officials and obviously he has something to hide because uh, this story apparently is this uh, Greg Bruner the student was harassed by students the and the faculty of District 206 and the police and now they're trying to cover this all up so I don't appreciate people you know you know harassing me harassing kids and then using public money to try and cover it all up so that's why that was the whole purpose of my call is to talk to Commissioner uh, Casalius and inform her of this information so I sent an email it has an attachment with my data requests on it it has a copy of uh, the phone calls of Rick Lane it has a copy of um, the ridiculous co supposed contract that was sent to me it's actually a falsified draft because again it is missing signatures and uh, so uh, I demand that this be looked into oh and uh, the part I forgot is um, there's a court case against this student apparently he was rear-ended in town and now they're charging him with a crime so I've added that information on also so uh, apparently this, they've targeted this child targeted the family and targeting me and I, I don't appreciate either one of those you know so that's why I'm demanding some action here so again the information is all in uh, Commissioner Casalius' uh, email uh, box. I just sent it as I was speaking with you. So. Okay. So. Um, I see it here. She did receive it. So, okay. Um, okay. Good. Good. Well, uh, uh, my name is Terry. T E R R Y. Nemers. N is in Nancy. E. M is in Mary. M is in Mary. E R S. And my phone number is 320-283-5713. And I would appreciate a call back from the commissioner so I would have confirmation that she is looking into this, because this is a serious matter. I mean, it, this is a public safety issue. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, if, if children aren't even safe from their own, their own superintendent or the police, you know, or or someone who's looking into it isn't safe, then then there's some real problems, and there needs to be a, a thorough investigation. Okay. So, is that possible that she can call me back? Well, she most likely will not call you back. I will. Ha what she'll do is um, see who the proper person is in our agency to um, work with you on this. Okay. And then uh, I'm guessing it's somebody in our compliance office who handles complaints and works with um, matters such as yours and uh, help you get some resolution. Well, uh, it, it's just not me. It's this this student and the student's family that needs some resolution. I mean, obviously, they're the original targets. I'm a secondary target, you know, just because I've decided to look into this. You know, because I'm concerned about public safety. So uh, it's not just me. Uh, I'm concerned yeah. about the family. So uh, the the information is is there, uh, his address, and you know it's on the it's on the public document that I submitted. So you know I, I think that the family should be contacted so they have some resolution because obviously. You know, if they were targeted by the school or the police before, and, and again, this is an ongoing criminal case they have against the child, so I would presume that the, there's ongoing harassment at school that has never been resolved. And I do believe there's laws against bullying. You know, I, I presume, 
presumably there's laws against the the, the staff bullying the the student too so but but apparently there there's two different sets of laws one for the administration and the police and one for everyone else so so again that's why again it's not just for my resolution it's for their resolution so you understand what I'm saying? I mean, this is I'm not I'm not trying to be selfish about this. I, I'm concerned about other people. So. Right. I understand. Okay. Well, then, uh, when do you suppose that this uh, compliance person? Oh, who would this compliance person be then? Well, I'm guessing that it's going to go to see. Each district is independently operated, uh -huh. and. We have to first decide if this is a, a situation where we have any authority to um, step into. Uh -huh. So I'm, the compliance office, Patricia Templin, who is the supervisor there, she'll first look at it, and then she will um, have one of her team members then take the case on. Okay. Could you spell her name for me, too, please? Okay, T E M T L E. Templin, T is in Tom, E, M, P is in Paul. Okay. L, I N. Okay, Templin, and then Patricia, you said. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and she's the the compliance officer. She's the supervisor of the compliance. And that's out of uh, District 206 up in Douglas County? No, nope, that's out of our agency here. Oh, okay, okay. Alrighty. Uh, do you have a phone number for her? Okay. Hopefully you don't need to use that number very often. No. Okay, so the compliance office number is 651-582-582-8689. Okay. Well, I appreciate your help. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Have, have a good day. Yeah, you too. Bye now.